In this unit, we will learn to calculate the value of the reaction quotient and determine what it means with respect to a reaction at equilibrium. Our goal is to determine the direction of the reaction by using the concentrations we're given initially and how the value of the reaction quotient Q compares to K. In the previous examples we've worked, we've seen that the reaction could only proceed in one direction. We either had the presence of reactants or the presence of products, and therefore the reaction had to go in a certain direction because we could not lose something we did not have. However, we can also see that we have reactions where we have both initial concentrations of reactants and products, and we're going to have to use something called the reaction quotient, which is abbreviated Q, to determine if a system is at equilibrium, and if it's not, how we know which direction it's going to go to get to equilibrium. So when we calculate the value of Q, we actually calculate it the exact same way we calculate K. The reason for the different label is because we don't know if we are at equilibrium, and so we can't call it an equilibrium constant, so we call it Q, which stands for the reaction quotient. Notice that for my reaction A going to B, we can write the reaction quotient, the concentration of B over the concentration of A, or products over reactants. I can then calculate the value of Q and compare it to the value of K to determine which way the reaction will proceed. The first example we'll look at is when Q is less than K. So here we have a value of Q of 1.3 and K is 3.2. What that tells us is that the value of Q needs to increase in order to reach equilibrium. And for this value to increase, we need the concentration of B to increase and we need the value of A to decrease. And as a result, that means the reaction will proceed in the forward direction. We're consuming A and producing more B. On the other side of the spectrum, when we look at a Q value of 4.8, which is greater than the K value of 3.2 for a particular reaction, we see that we actually need to do just the opposite. Our numerator is too high, our denominator is too low, so what we need to happen now is for the value of B, or the amount of B we have present, to decrease, and the amount of A to increase. And when that happens, we'll see that the ratio of concentration of B over the concentration of A will also reduce, the value of Q will reduce, and it will continue until we get to the value of K. If we calculate the reaction quotient and we find that Q is equal to K, then we know we are at equilibrium. Now, remember, we are at dynamic equilibrium. Reactants are still going to products, products are still going to reactant, but the rate of those two reactions is exactly the same. That's what we mean by that dynamic chemical equilibrium. So let's look at an example. The reaction has an equilibrium constant of 0 0.078 at 100 degrees Celsius. If the initial concentration of each of the three substances is 0 0.100 molar, which way will the reaction proceed to reach equilibrium? Hopefully you saw that the reaction would need to proceed in the reverse direction. We have to look at our reaction, which is a balanced equation that was given to us, we have to look at the value of K that was given, F.078, and we need to compare that to the value of Q. So what we're going to look at on the next slide is to see how we calculated that value of Q. So here I've summarized the information given in the problem. The concentration of each of the three species is 0 0.100 molar. The K value was given as 0 0.078 at 100 degrees Celsius. Now what we need to calculate is Q, so I look at the concentration of the product, so the concentration of SO2 times the concentration of Cl2, and I need to divide that by the concentration of SO2Cl2. So here's my reaction quotient expression. I can now plug in the values that I know, which are going to be the same numbers for each concentration, because that's what was given in the problem. It doesn't always have to be that way. And when I do this, I see that my value of Q is going to be equal to 0 0.100. So now I have to look at the comparison between Q and K. And when I look at them, I see that the value of Q, 0 0.100, is greater than 0 0.078. So I know that Q is greater than K. 
In order to reach equilibrium, I need the value of Q to decrease. So I need Q needs to decrease. And the way that the Q decreases is that the amount of my products decrease and the amount of my reactant needs to increase. So now, if this happens, the products decrease, the reactant increases, I'm going to see that the value of Q decreases, and what I see is that this will continue until Q equals K, at which point we will be at chemical equilibrium. Now that we've figured out how to determine which way the reaction will proceed, we have to also figure out what those equilibrium concentrations are. We're going to go back to using an ice table, but the problems are going to be a little bit more complicated than what we saw in the previous section.